Another game that is very important in aspects of the public sector, but also across elements of commercial industry, is the chicken game. Chicken game was first made famous in a James Dean movie in which two individuals would drive towards a cliff and see who was the last one to jump out of the car. It's also been perhaps more recently known in Footloose, in which the Kevin Bacon character and his great rival compete in a game which they drive tractors directly towards one another and to see who will blink first or who will drive off the road or whoever they will be they will crash. It's a very simple game in many ways. It simply consists of players. They face one another and they do something that may be considered to be daft or dangerous and to see who will blink first, who will swerve. So if these two cars, red car and blue car, accelerate towards one another, let's see what happens if both of them refuse to swerve. Boom. Yes, what we'd see is both are destroyed. In this situation, of course, this is a bad decision. Both of them have been destroyed. It's the worst possible outcome. So it clearly isn't a Nash equilibrium because if either of them was to to, to swerve, then it would be a better decision. So what what is to be suggested as to what happens? Well, one obvious thing that can happen is that the two cars can line up opposite one another and they can drive towards one another, as we saw before, and they can both swerve. They both survive. So this game, in this situation, the game is a draw. And is this a a good outcome. Well, of course, it's a better outcome, but the reality of this is this is not a Nash equilibria. This is not a stable outcome. Why is that? It's both survive, but if a Nash equilibria is based on the idea that neither of them could do better by changing their strategy. Now, of course, they have not played their best strategy because they both now know, ooh, the other car swerved. If I hadn't swerved, I would have won the game. Therefore, I would have had a better outcome. I wouldn't. At the moment, we both look like chickens. Better to be a chicken than dead. But actually, if I kept going, I'd have looked like a hero and uh, also would not be dead. So it's not an Ash equilibrium. There are definitely ways of doing this that are much better. So what happens in the case of a Nash equilibrium then? Well, in this first situation, let's have a look. Oh, red swerves. Blue keeps on going. Blue wins. But this actually is stable. This is a Nash equilibria. Both have survived. Red lost, but they haven't swerved. They would have done worse. They would have died. Therefore, they cannot change their strategy to make it a better strategy. And of course, blue, if they'd swerved, would still have survived, but they would have lost. So blue cannot change the strategy to make get a better strategy. They can do that. It's a clear example, of course, that in these sort of international games, there are worse things than losing. So in this situation, blue wins. So what happens the opposite way around? Clearly we go through, woo, they swerve, this time blue swerves. Red wins. Again, this is a Nash equilibrium. Both have survived. Blue has lost, but if blue hadn't swerved, they would have died. So they've played the best strategy under the circumstances. The circumstances include the actions of red. The circumstance is where red has not swerved. So we cannot say the best decision of the circumstances without allowing for the actions of the other player. These are dynamic, interactive games. Again, there are worse things than losing. If red had swerved, as we'd seen, blue could have improved by going straight on. Therefore, that would not be a Nash equilibria. So, in mathematical terms, what are we therefore looking at? Well, we're looking at a simple straight system here. We have red car and blue car. If both swerve, we have a, a neutral outcome. They're both chicken, but neither is braver than the other. If the red car swerves, but the blue car goes straight, then we have a zero for red and a one point for blue. Blue has proved to be brave. Red car, chicken, so it's not achieved. So in fact, the red car is no worse off than they were if they swerved. But uh, straight, if the red car goes straight and blue car swerves, oh, the blue car is no worse off than if it swerved, but the red car has proved their bravery. And they've now got one point. The problem is, as we can see, they're no worse off if they swerve when the other car goes straight as against if they swerve when they didn't. But if they choose to go straight, everybody's worse off, as we saw with the big crash. So both things end up with minus one. So two equilibria then. Each one where one wins and one loses. So how 
If these are the only stable equilibria once they've been adopted, how do you decide which one you're going to get to? Well, if you actually look at the clip after this of, uh, of the Footloose movie, you'll see that Kevin Bacon wins when his foot gets stuck. What happens when his foot gets stuck is he can't leap out of the tractor as he's expected to do. So what we're actually talking about is a situation in which if one person looks like they're forced to continue the driving straight somewhere, or perhaps they've uh, removed the steering wheel, perhaps they've tied their hands to the steering wheel or something like that, then the other person might panic and then swerve. What you need to do is try and pr convince the opposition that you are crazy enough to destroy everybody, you are crazy enough to allow the crash, that is the way that you will win, for, win and they will blink first. So how do you do this? Well, in this case, an irrational strategy can be very rational when you're trying to do this. You're trying to get the opponent to believe that you will bring, you will swerve, you will not swerve. Therefore, they will swerve. Therefore, they will blink, blink first. Get to know this. And if you want to see an example of this in international politics, there's a short video article from the Guardian on the on the VLE, which looks at the consider the behaviour of the Greek finance minister and the way he's actually mobilised the people of Greece to protest and riot and complain and to push forward to try and say to the the people at the from the EU who are pushing the Greece to say they would not give them any more loans to say that actually no we are we are not we are crazy so we'd look at this and there are other good examples of the chicken game in international politics and also in in business I've put up videos of three of them the Cuban Missile Crisis the classic example of the the chicken game where it seems at first that uh, the US blink the UK, US didn't blink the Soviet Union blinked because the missiles were taken out of Cuba. But also it's shown later on that missiles have been taken out of Turkey. So in fact, both had swerved. But both swerving was unstable outcome. Not as bad as both, be as uh, neither swerving. So what this continued then, of course, for another 30 years until eventually the Soviet Union pulled out the game altogether and fell apart. So you can see an example of how this game would have to continue to be played until one team, either until neither swerved or until one swerved and one kept going straight, doing that. We also got the Greek debt crisis I've already mentioned. And here's a point that Varoukakis said, what they're doing with Greece has a name, terrorism. What Brussels the Troika want today is for the yes vote to win so they could humiliate the Greeks. Why did they force to close the banks to instill fear in people and spreading fear is called terrorism? Varoukakis obviously was using game theory himself with the mobilisation of the people, but he also said that the Troika and certain of the Greek elements of the Greek political, political political class were actually using the same sort of fear tactics to convince people that they wouldn't swerve. And the final one, of course, the an example we put on the video is vaporware. In the computer industry, vaporware is a product, typically computer hardware software, that is announced to the general public, but is never actually manufactured nor officially cancelled. Use of the word is broadened to include products such as automobiles. Vaporware is often announced months or years before its purported release, with development details lacking. Developer, developers have been accused of intentionally promoting vaporware to keep customers from switching to competing products that offer more features. Network World magazine called vaporware an epidemic in 1989 and blamed the press for not investigating whether developers' claims were true. Seven major companies issued a report in 1990 saying they felt vaporware had hurt the industry's credibility. United States accused several companies of announcing vaporware early in violation of antitrust laws, but few have been found guilty. Infoworld magazine wrote that the word is overused and placed an unfair stigma on developers. Vaporware was coined by a Microsoft engineer in 1982 to describe the company's Xenix operating system and first appeared in print in a newsletter by the entrepreneur Isfer Dyson in 1983. It became popular among writers in an industry as a way to describe products they felt took too long to be released. Infoworld magazine editor Stuart Olsop helped popularise it by lampooning Bill Gates with a Golden Vaporware Award for the late release of his company's first version of Windows in 1985. Vaporware first implied intentional fraud when it was applied to the Ovation Office suite in 1983. The suite's demonstration was received by the press, but the, light, the product was later revealed to have never existed. So it's an important issue both in public sector, but it does have very much private sector implications as well.